right, so today we're gonna fit a Y62 front bar. All of them from series one to five are basically all the same. This particular one is a series five. Before we fit the bar, we have to get everything ready on the vehicle. And there's lots of little things to remove. So obviously bumper first. When you remove the bumper, there's two little screws that are up in here, which you have to get from inside that quite often catch everyone out because they're very hard to find. The clips that are on the bottom of the headlight, then removed the splash shields from the side of the radiator. Obviously the main frame that's down on the floor there. And retain the, the 16 mil nuts from that because we're going to reuse them. Uh, the little side clips, which are here, they have got to be unbolted and removed. Uh, some people like to paint that bit black so you don't see it from behind the bar. We've trimmed the guard liners off. We try and go 20 mil down from this bracket. The only important area is here. The rest you just do neatly follow the body line so it's all nice and tidy. As we're going to fit road safe recovery points, the small hole that's down in here needs to be diagrammed because there's normally a little bit of steel that overlaps the hole where the bolt goes through. So we've got that all cleaned up and ready. Uh, if you've got a TIL, this is a TI, the radar bracket will be mounted in the bumper because they have the front spoiler style bumper. You have to get that bracket from Nissan. It won't have captive nuts if it's a TIL, so you'll have to nut to where that bracket bolts to. You can buy them from Nissan, they're about $70 and get that all fitted in that original spot, like a TI. Also, if it's a TIL, the bottom nuts, which the bar's gonna mount to, and the recovery points, which is underneath, three of them won't be captive, and they also need to be nut suited, which is 12 mil fine thread to 12 mil 1.25. This center cross member, we like to cut out. You leave the sides, because it's what retains the headlight. You don't have to cut it out, the winch and everything will fit with it still in place. It's just if you want to service the winch later with the grill out, you still can't get to it, because this is infilled. So by trimming it out, your headlight still stays mounted, but the access to your winch is very easy through the top. We'll move over to the bar. So from the grill, we've removed the camera from this little bracket that's screwed to the inside of your grill. Discard that. And we sub-assemble the bar on the bench. So face down, bolt the wings on, for the wings, the wings are slotted in both directions. We like to put them to the bottom of the slot and line the front up nice and parallel. So as long as the wing and the front of the bar are parallel to each other and all the way to the bottom, that'll give you the biggest wing gap that we can possibly get. You can always adjust up from there if you like, but generally that works pretty well. Squirter headlight washer. These remove from the housing in the bumper. They have a little clip that's here. Take them out, they stay in their original orientation. The hoses, nothing needs extending. So basically this plastic section will be double-sided taped into your bumper with a screwdriver, you pluck them out, leave the double-sided tape on it. I know it won't stick, but it gives it some grip. And then you use our new retaining bracket um, to hold them into place. Once that's done, that'll slide back through and come home. Clip will go back in. And then what I like to do is put a zip tie through the light and to there, because it sits against it. It just means it takes any load off that when it's going down the road, because these obviously extend out when the, when the headlight's getting washed. So all the loom out of the, you remove everything out of the bumper. Parking sensors, we supply a new parking sensor housing, a genuine Nissan one. So that'll be clipped into the bar. Then your original sensor you've clipped out of your bumper will click just straight home into that. The two outer ones need to be extended. We supply that in the loom. It's only six inches of wire, but that needs to be extended. And then basically lay everything in as it was in the bumper. Camera bracket mounted there, light bar, everything in the bolt kit for the bar has new bolts. So even the light bar and everything, stainless hardware for the camera, everything is supplied. Don't reuse anything from the light. If you're fitting steady fog lights, now's the time to do that too, obviously. Bolt them in, extend your wires. Well, you don't need to extend them, but wire them up whatever brand light you've used you obviously need to connect that into the factory fog light loom so that it'll work on the stalk as per factory plug your water hoses all back on so basically the bar will be tight radar covers fitted from the rear all tight all done rubber on here so basically everything we can do on the bench so you're not trying to work behind it we try and do now zip tie everything up to where you're happy with and any extra accessories light wires and stuff now's the time to mount it all and then it's ready to off to the vehicle when you're fitting the road safe recovery points, as I said, we've diagrammed that hole out to let the pin go through. There is a plate that slides on the inside, which has the captive nut on it, which you're gonna fit between the radiator and the chassis. It's very important to check that the, the radiator is central. It's only mounted in rubber. There's two 13 mil bolts on the top. You can back off and centralize it if need be, but you're just gonna make sure it doesn't have a lot of room. 
but that it has room. The other thing to watch is there's a few welds and, and, and stuff on the inside of the rail that that plate isn't sitting on it, but it's nice and flush and all the way home. Because once we fit the bar, there's actually a, a thread through the middle of that pin that's one of the mounting bolts. So it's, it's nice to get it all in there and lined up now while you can see it, because once the bar's on, it's very, very hard to see. We're now ready to fit the bar. See the studs, watch the guard. There we go. Beautiful. You just hold pressure on it there and I'll get the nuts. We've sat the bar on and we're just getting everything on loose. As far as mounting the bar, we leave these two nuts off because the wing brace is going to go on them next. So we've just done that, that nut and the one on the inside. Everything is still loose. Um, as far as the recovery points, because these are actually an integrated mount to the bar, in the road safe kit, it'll come with your main bolt, which we put through earlier with the captive nut on the inside. And it comes with a few different shims. We run the three mil shim in behind the bar, which will put the bar at the bottom of its slots, the six mil shim there, and then the bolt through, through the, the whole lot. So bar and recovery point. It, has, it comes with the, um, a bolt at the back here that has this washer that's made to the, suit the original recovery point, so it'll bolt through the whole lot. Again, it has a, a space, a washer, that goes between the original recovery or tie point um, and through the road safe one. Now, the most impo important bolt that everyone misses, this main pin that's going through the rail has a thread that's 90 degrees through it. So there's actually a long bolt up through the inside that goes ties through. So if you look when this moves, the main pin moves because it's it's through the whole lot. So the trick is is to get your torch in where Adam is, line your thread up that you by turning this back and forth till you're nice and level and feeding your bolt through. It is quite tedious but it's a very critical bolt to have because it makes them interlock from every every different angle. From here basically we're gonna we're gonna tighten the whole lot up. So bar to the face, them to the bottom don't worry about wing gap at the tip here. It'll, it should look nice and parallel here at this point, but the tip won't. We can move them around later. That's, that's not, don't focus on the sides. As long as the front looks nice and even, which, it, which they will. And again, when we were putting it together earlier, this was the getting the front face parallel that we were looking for. All the way down and parallel with the front. Uh, from here, we tighten it up. So what we're gonna do next is tighten the wing. I've already done this one. We'll go to the next one. Um, with your wing brace, now that we've bolted the wing brace on, pull it all the way down, nip these bolts all up nice and tight so the wing brace will be firm. In here we're going to use the um, 10mm hardware to bolt it through, the, there's a tab on the wing to the wing brace. Like I said before, this bit should already be nice and even and parallel. The wing can sit slightly up or down or in or out. Basically what you're going to do is, with the help of a friend, get them to hold it where you want it, out, in, up, down and then you do the two bolts up under here and that'll lock that in. Just make sure everything gets doubly tight. Once they're tight, the, um, in between the two bolts on the tab, you'll notice there's a drilling hole. So there's a hole in one in the wing brace, but not in the tab. With a 90 degree drill, you pin that and nut and bolt that as well. From there, we're gonna, put the, we're gonna plug everything in. Now, on this side, it's important. Um, we look up under here. The squirter hose is normally clipped in over here. We like to unclip it and then um, we can plug it back in, going up like through the hole or over the top, it doesn't really matter. But if you don't unclip it, the squirter hose for the headlight washers will be very tight. If you unclip it, it'll come across here and have plenty of play. We're also trying to go up and over the top because our bash plate's gonna sit against here. So everything has to be up over the top. Plug all our sensors and everything in. At this point, once you've plugged the, the, the squirters in, the sensors and all your fog lights, before you go any further, check everything works, because once we put these on, you're gonna have to take it all off to fix it. Now that we've checked that all our things work, we've checked the sensors, the squirters, to check they work, they're the fourth squirt, like windscreen squirters with your headlights on, they will activate, just out of interest. We're gonna put the bash plate on, so with the help of a friend, through the middle, we're gonna use the um, eight mil stainless button heads and the flange nuts. Flange nuts won't require a spanner on the back because they're serrated, you just gotta get someone to hold them. So get them all in loosely around the edge. I do like to do these three with the help of a friend with their arm. These two you can get from the back of the wheel arch, letting the guard liner hang backwards and let you get your hand in there. Once we've got all them in, 
the final thing, and you're definitely happy with your wing and all the stuff, we pin that. So once you, that one, the bash plate will have the hole, uh, and you've got to pin it through the wing brace. That just locks the whole assembly tight. From there, you just poke the guard liner in, it'll pop over this little fold and, and it'll retain it, put your clip back in, and then that's all done. The very last step is just to fit your winch, which we'll do now. You do that dead last, because if you do want to adjust something, everything can be accessed with a rattle gun from the inside, because the wing bolts have a, an adjoining hole on the other side, so an extension and a socket can be put through there from the inside. But if you've got your winch in, you can't access it. So we like to get all this done, now we drop the winch in from the top, bolt holes are from the bottom, and you can get all that tight at this height. Completely finished, so then we break apart all the bolts, make sure everything's tight, winch is tight, completely done, lower it onto the ground, do your wiring for your winch, grill back in, and you're a finished job. As far as accessories go that will fit, uh, everything's made around steady lights, but other brands will fit. So this is the steady 21.5 inch light bar. However, any 20 inch light bar will fit. You may have to drill new holes in the underneath for it, but anything will fit. The standard bolt pattern up on the top here is for your intensity style lights, your steady or kings, pretty much anything, or all that standard bolt pattern. It has a spot for your UHF aerial here. So you can run the, the round lights and a light bar together. Uh, you just gotta make sure you put your bolts from the bottom up, not bottom down, otherwise obviously they'll crash into each other. A, a straight fair lead is what they're designed around. Obviously most now come as a dual fair lead like this, so they're not quite ideal, but a straight fair lead is what they're meant to have and a slim line number plate. Obviously we supply them with the road safe recovery points and they are a, a crucial part of the mounting fixture, so that's why they come with the bar. And steady fog lights, again, these are the steady type A. Uh, which means they point forward. The Type B, I think, are the angled face ones. They all will work, and that's a pretty generic bolt pattern, so you could chop and change brands. Basically, everything has been designed around the steady brand. Uh, you have the slot here, so you can see what your rope's doing down in there when it's active, um, just to see if you're binding up or, or putting too much on one side. Obviously, camera is now here. Camera's gone from this hole here to here, so your view's only changed very, very minimally. It does basically give you the same view for your 360. All the standard features from radar to, to sensors, everything are in their original spacings and, and heights. So even with a non-lifted car, these shouldn't read the ground, like what a lot do on some bull bars. Um, as in when you stopped at the lights, they, they all work as per standard. By that, we're done.